Orthographic projection has its uses, particularly while modeling 3D objects. However, when rendering objects in a realistic way, we'll want to mimic how human eyes and real cameras perceive objects in a scene. So our method of projection into the CVV is going to have to change, and this time we'll use a perspective projection transformation. Now to understand the visual difference between perspective and orthographic projection, we must first understand that a camera's field of view is actually a frustum, or that is a, a truncated pyramid, right? So let's, let's actually just visualize that here. Let's draw out this uh, pyramid with the top kind of cut off, right? We can see the rest of the field of view here being this kind of this expanding shape, right? As we, we can see more objects as we move farther into the sea, right? That's where this frustum shape comes from. Now, the reasoning behind why the view volume is a frustum for perspective projection, and to an extent, the entire reason behind how human eyes see in perspective in the first place, involves the idea behind how pinhole cameras work. Now, we'll discuss cameras at length in an upcoming lecture. However, we'll just briefly take a look at the general idea here. Now, with a pinhole camera, uh, basically what we do is we allow light to pass through a tiny little hole and uh, be projected onto an image plane uh, behind that hole, right? So light coming from uh, maybe the top of the scene. So let's let's uh, follow the path of a ray of light coming from uh, you know somewhere, maybe this this uh, corner on this uh, rectangular object here. Uh, let's follow the path of this light ray as it passes through this pinhole. And let's see where it lands on the image plane. So, you know, maybe it'll land somewhere around there. We're going to see that, you know, light from the top of the scene is going to end up intersecting the image plane around the bottom, the, the, the bottom side of the image plane. And likewise, light from the bottom of the image. Again, we'll just take this bottom corner of the object right here. We'll just uh, try and trace the path of that light ray as it passes through that pinhole, and we'll see that it intersects somewhere around the top of the image plane, right? So this is the idea behind uh, why, well, uh, cameras and even the human eye itself actually perceives objects upside down. And so with uh, with well with a digital camera, this image is just flipped once the image is processed, and well the the brain just flips the image for us when we uh, when when we uh, take a look out into the real world so that we actually see things the right way around. Um, but in three D rendering, we take a different approach simply by moving the image plane forward such that it lies in front of the pinhole or this, this point of convergence here. So let's actually go ahead and do that. Let's grab this image plane and let's actually move it. Let's move it in front of this uh, point of convergence here. Let's, have, let's move it all the way. Let's move it all the way over here so that we can see that uh, these points of intersection, you know, the image is no longer flipped. It actually appears the right way around. Light coming from the top of the scene still ends up on the top side of the image plane and uh, likewise for the bottom of the scene. So we'll treat uh, this point of convergence actually as the origin of camera space. So let's use a different color here and I'll draw out a, a little camera object. We'll just pretend that this is our camera positioned uh, right, uh, right at this this point of convergence, and uh, we can we can also draw additional lines again from that point of convergence from from camera space origin. We can draw additional lines out to other geometric components in the scene. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for the uh, the two corners again of this rectangular object that are farther away from the camera. And let's take a look and see where all of these lines intersect the image plane. And this is gonna help with our visual intuition for how 
perspective projection actually works. And the whole reason behind why objects farther away from the camera actually appear to be smaller than objects closer to the camera, right? So let's take a look at these points of intersection. So these points that are, uh, you know, some distance, some distance from the camera, well, when light rays coming from those points pass through and intersect the image plane, in fact, let's use, let's use this, uh, let's use this red color for these points of intersection. You know, here we are, we, we, we can see where those, those light rays intersect. And so we would be, we would be representing these geometric components as being located, well, right about here on the image plane. Let's contrast that with light rays coming from geometric components farther away in the scene, right? So these components are, you know, a larger distance away from, uh, well, both the camera and the image plane, but, uh, but, but really it's the, it's the distance from the camera that we are interested in here. Now, when these components intersect the image plane, well, look at that. In, in, in reality, these geometric components are at the same uh, Y coordinate, right? If, if, uh, if this vertical axis is the Y axis, uh, then these components are at the same Y value. However, when projected onto this image plane, look at that, the, the, the place where these light rays intersect is a lot different than where these other components intersected. Those components, of course, being closer to the camera. So we can see that anything farther from the camera is going to appear to be actually smaller when projected onto the image plane. Whereas anything closer to the camera, such as these points right up here, well, their projection is going to be larger. And so this is the, the sort of visual reasoning behind how perspective projection works. Next, let's examine the transformation matrix for perspective projection to determine how it works. Now, this matrix might look a little bit odd coming from our understanding of orthographic projection, so we'll need to take a few steps backwards to see how we got here. In orthographic projection, we know that in order to scale our x-coordinates to the proper position, we multiply by two divided by the width of the view volume. So we can see those elements present in this calculation. However, uh, we do need to add one other consideration to this scaling when working in perspective. And that is the ratio of the distance to the near plane divided by the z coordinate of, of the particular point uh, that we're working with here. Now, this does beg the question, where on earth is this divide by z actually occurring? Because that is not written into this matrix here. But understand that uh, where this n comes from is, uh, is that it's a part of this, this, this multiply by uh, the distance to the near plane divided by the z component. And if we think about it, this should make sense, right? Uh, points close to the camera will have a smaller z value, and therefore this ratio will be larger. And, uh, well, points further from the camera will have a larger z value, therefore making this ratio smaller. So we can see that multiplying by this ratio uh, should have a, you know, a scaling effect. It'll, it'll take points that are farther from the camera and shrink them down so that they are they actually appear smaller after this perspective projection actually takes place. So we will get to this divide by z in just a moment, but first let's just observe that the same thing applies to the y coordinates. We can see here the multiplication by n for the 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 y scaling as well. However, we still need to answer this question as to how exactly this divide by z actually occurs. So it is rather complex how the division by z actually takes place, but it has to do with the fact that when using homogeneous coordinates, when the four-dimensional transformation is projected back into three-dimensional space, well, remember, every component is divided by that w component, right? The, 
the fourth coordinate of a homogeneous vector. And, uh, well, of course, we remember back from our video on uh, homogeneous transformations that the reason that division takes place is to get that w coordinate back to a value of 1, because every point that exists in three-dimensional space actually operates at the, 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 the four-dimensional plane where w is equal to 1, right? So that, that division by w is it is is part of the the projection back into three dimensional space. Again, we're not going to get lost in the details of how that works in this video. However, we're just going to take note here that by using a one in the in the Z column of this matrix, we are actually able to essentially set that W coordinate equal to Z such that when we when we perform that inevitable division by w uh, wh right where we we divide all the final xyz components by w we are in fact dividing by z right basically taking taking all of these calculated results here and performing a division by z Again, it is difficult to visualize where this division by z actually occurs. However, for the sake of brevity here, let's accept that it happens as a part of the beauty of working with homogeneous matrices. The scaling of the z coordinate here is also a bit different from orthographic projection as well. Here we scale it by the far plane over uh, far plane minus near plane. Again, the Z translation is slightly different as well in that we take the formula from the orthographic projection and multiply in the distance to the far plane. Ultimately though, when using the perspective projection here, uh, when we take some coordinates, some, some X, Y coordinates, and change the Z value, we're gonna see that you know, our, our intuition of, of things farther from the camera, having a larger Z value, we're gonna see our, our intuition of those things being shrunk down. We're gonna see that playing out uh, with, with this perspective projection. So let's actually jump back into Excel and take a look at uh, just some example calculations just to see exactly what would happen with different X, Y coordinates when we change the Z value. So back in Excel here, again, we have the same setup that we used back when taking a look at orthographic projections. However, this time, uh, the calculations involved in, well, calculating this scaled version of the coordinate, um, you know, as well as the translation for the Z component, uh, well, we've implemented the formulas present in the perspective projection matrix. So let's keep, just for starters here, let's keep uh, the Z coordinate of some imagined point in space. Let's keep that Z coordinate at a value of one, which again, I, I, we've defined that, uh, well, the, the near plane of the view volume is also at Z equals one. So yeah, that, that's, that's, a, that's a good starting point here. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a good known starting point for uh, doing, a, doing a little experiment here. So, uh, well, let's start off actually with the same example we did for orthographic projection. We will we'll take a, a camera X coordinate of zero. We can see that when remapped into the CVV, uh, well, the, the point lands at the same X coordinate. And we can see that by just slowly incrementing this, you know, maybe one, two, three, and all the way up to a value of five, which is where the right plane of the view volume actually is, we can see that when remapped into this CVV with its uh, left and right planes sitting at x equals uh, negative one to one, well, we can see that the, the scaling operates exactly the same way as it did with orthographic projection. However, in this case, let's take that, uh, that Z coordinate and let's start increasing it, therefore moving this point farther away from the camera. So let's, let's change that to a value of two. And we can see that already uh, the scaling, right? Be because we are taking into account the Z coordinate, in fact, we are dividing 
by the z coordinate in this uh, in 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 the calculation for the for the scaling of x and y coordinates uh, we can see that already um, this point has actually been scaled down uh, when, when moved to z equals 2 the the point will land at x equals uh, 0.5 let's move it even farther away from the camera and uh, and well let's go to 3 so we get scaled down even more 4 and 5 right and so so there we go at uh, if if that point was positioned at the far plane of of the view volume it would be scaled all the way down such that it actually lands at x equals 0 0.2 and of course taking a look at the the scaling and translation for this z coordinate we can see that well the same uh, line of thinking that we were using back with orthographic projection still works here right like even if we take this back to z equals one well uh where, where exactly what what is the remapped z coordinate when projected into the cvv well it'll be z equals 1.25 minus 1.25 it'll be right at zero that that makes perfect sense uh the the new right this is the old near plane well the the new near plane right the, the near plane of the cvv if you will is at z equals zero so this calculation makes sense right we can continue uh moving this point farther and farther away from the camera until maybe we end up right at the old far plane well we can see that now 1.25 minus uh, 0 0.25 well, that makes perfect sense again. This will be positioned exactly at the kind of the, the new far plane of the CVV again, just, just to use that analogy. All right, so hopefully again that helped uh, j just to prototype some of the calculations here so that we can see the math in action. Again, we're not doing a full matrix multiplication here on individual points. We're just taking one point and fiddling around with the x coordinates to see what will happen again the same thing happens for y coordinates no need to reproduce those results and also fiddling around with the z coordinates to see how depth impacts the x and y coordinates how it impacts this scaling factor